Oh, there we go. That's a good one. He's pulling drag. What's up, guys? Today's video is sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, although it should probably be sponsored by the jumper cables. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. What's up, gang? We're starting off this one with the uh, dead Camaro. We just got a new battery in this thing not even that long ago, but it pretty much just sits. We don't drive it very often, and we might do some fishing today. We might do something entirely different. I really have no clue, but we're going to see if the thing starts. Let me show you what you got to do to get these 2010s set up to jump. So, so this is normal, but you got to attach you got to attach the negative to this little guy right here. Let me see. Bam. That's your ground or whatever the heck you call it. Try and crank it up. Let me go rev the STI for a second. This should do it. Let's see. Let's see if that helps. Oh! <laughs> Listen to her! Woo, the house is shaking. The V6 lives! Okay, there we go. She's idled down. It looks like one of the tires needs a little air. We gotta get this thing back out on the street and a car wash. Holy smokes. Could really use that. So dirty. While we're in the garage, why not a quick tour of the new... We got the trailer here with the three bona fide yaks. It might be taken out sometime soon. Uh, we got the new new rods over here. We've got a little bit of the home gym which is highly cluttered at the moment but don't worry uh, we might do some home workouts in future videos. Let's go ahead and get this thing unplugged. That's a good idea. We might just take the Camaro if we go fish and really get its juices flowing but it kind of needs a couple pounds of pressure in the rear tire I believe. Let's go ahead and get these things aired up. Okay she's gonna back this out of the driveway then we're gonna pull the Camaro out. Let me get this out of the way. We need to do an episode on how to keep your garage clean, or how to clean your garage. All right, we're gonna just continue letting her warm up and charge. Come over here and grab the compressor. Y'all wanna talk about tackle organization. We have that, we have that down. It only takes one glance into the Smith's residence garage to understand that we use MTB and Catchco over here on the channel. Shop Carl, save 30% on your baits and tackle like the Smiths. Anyways, back to the Camaro. We got this compressor, it's pretty sweet. We have the attachment that shows your air pressure and everything. The thing that's a bummer about this one, it's a little older, I think, in its design. And you have to like screw this and unscrew it to relieve the pressure inside of the tank each time. Over at the HQ, the boys got a sick one. It's freaking legit. You literally it's just got this toggle switch. And as soon as you open it, you can let all the air out. And once you tighten it right back up, you can fill it back up with air. I'm thinking it might be time for the New Year's edition. I might have to put this baby on Craigslist. Anyways, let's fire this thing up. See what I'm saying? The air is coming out here, so you gotta like twist this. It's just an extra 10 seconds I don't have. Should be good. We'll get this thing back on the road ASAP. There we go, that should do it. All the tires were actually a little bit low. They were all like in the 30s. The tires say max load 50, so I did like mid 40s. I think that's the deal. I don't know. Anyways, we've had this Camaro for a long time. We could talk about it a little bit. Really, it's a, it's a V6 2010. Uh, as soon as these new Camaros came out, Devin definitely loved them. And of course, as soon as that Synergy Green paint job came out, it was kind of like a done deal, I think. And then over the time we've had it, we've done the axle back. It's literally just a muffler delete as far as the exhaust. And then we had the stripes taken off of the hood and trunk lid, and we just did the stripes going all the way front to back, gloss black. We've got the rear emblem filled in, uh, the tail lights are smoked, and then we also took these bezels off and painted them. If this thing was clean, it would really look good, but it's dirty. We've got the Vossen CV3s gloss black, although they look matte. We've got the V8 brake upgrade on the front and rears, but this is uh, also paint matched. We've got a paint matched stripe on the Vossens. We're just doing a little walk around in the Camaro today, show you guys what we've done. Devin and I Plasti dipped the logos. We've got the bow tie delete up front, and then the lenses are smoked in the front as well. Take you inside here. We've got the Hurst short throw shifter but this is the V8's shift pattern, so really the reverse on the V6 is over and up. And the Synergy Green in 2010 came with this green paneling, and also it's got like green stitching around the seats and everything. Um, just 
just a couple little touches. We've got 42,000 miles on this puppy. I think we bought it, it was either like 18,000, 21,000, somewhere in that range, about the time I turned 19, or a little bit after that when we had bought the 370 as well, which we no longer have. We bought these two cars around the same time. Uh, we paid cash for them back in the day, and we have just held on to this thing. It's like, I don't even know if it's worth selling. We love this thing. So I think we put 20,000 miles on this in, you know, nine years, eight years. Probably should keep these in the car too in case we need to jump it later. If it's not one thing, it's another out here. Look at this. Garage is definitely not closing. Nope. Garage 17. Nope. I have an idea. Hmm. Nope. Apparently Devin knows the right switch. <laughs> I'm telling you, I tried I tried this one that says garage, it that one. This, and like, oh it is that. Like, yep. Oh it is that. It's the outlet reset since we used the uh, compressor. Fantastico. Now she'll work. Problem solved, no thanks to me. Alright guys, we're about to take her out. I got two rod and reels prepped and ready. One with a swivel to make some hot swaps. Let me now tell you guys about today's sponsor, Mystery Tackle Box. I've been using this service for over a year now, absolutely loving it. They send you new baits every single month, specific to your region, area of the country, and always what is the best for the species you select. We've got the Bass Box, and it comes with a, in this specific one, we've got a Rattlin' Rogue Jerk Bait. We've got a Deep Diving Crank. Ooh, that will get them. We have uh, some drag and drops for your drop shot rigs, Guggen Baits. You know I love those. These look like more drop shot worms to be honest, which is great because the temperatures are getting cooler. Here we go. The 15, we'll just go 21. Well, almost $40 worth of goodies inside of this box and you guys can try your first box for as low as $5 with the link in the description. Get out of here. We've got some craws. I've got a Texas rig tied on and so that will come in handy. And then we have another crank and we even have some hooks to rig up things like those worms and the craws. Uh, an awesome box this month. I have actually, Put this uh, terminal tackle box in here because I know I'm just going to be carrying around this box at the ponds. This has got some extra hooks and weights in case we need it. I also threw in a couple Guggen Squad clutches, lipless rattling crankbaits because I know I'm going to be at some shallower ponds tonight and uh, these deep divers might not get the job done yet. I do want to throw some crankbaits and the beauty of this is you can actually add extra items to your box uh, every single month and it's going to be included with free shipping. So if you guys wanted to add something like the Guggen Squad Clutch, you can just go ahead and add those into your box, get the free shipping with that and so I'm going to probably toss around some of those tonight as well. Let's go ahead and get out to the ponds. We don't have a lot of time before sunset and see if we can't catch some hogs. We're going to have to go with plan B. There we go. Now we can get him inside this car. All right, let's go. Okay, we're here, 525. Sunset is in nine minutes, and it's getting a little chilly. 64 degrees, so I guess it's not that cold at all, but I'm just gonna put this on anyways. I haven't fished these ponds in forever. We're gonna see if we can even get a bite, you know what I'm saying? With our limited time budget, I think we can catch fish. Okay, well, battery seems to be working on the Camaro. Let's go ahead, rig one of these craws up. That is gonna be a simple swap. I already got the T-Rig here, quarter ounce Wu Tungsten weight. And uh, wouldn't you know it, we're also using Catch Co hooks, which you can get on Shop Carl's. So we are just decked out this evening. And this lighter side is the belly. And so if you're getting real specific, you wanna face the bottom towards your hook when you rig it on your Texas rig. That is going to uh, make sure it stays on the bottom. We shall switch this. We've got a Guggen Squad Grass Hero swim jig tied on. I believe that this crankbait is going to work a lot better than the ones that actually came in the box just for tonight's purpose because we're not out on the, I'm not out on the yak or the boat or even where there's a deeper area. So this one is not going to dive. I can control this and keep it a little bit more shallow with my speed I'm reeling it in. And this color should do good if it is uh, slightly murky or even to the point it's clear. I still like actually throwing this color. This, this color just really gets it done. It's got a little bit of a rattle too, extra noise. Can't go wrong, let's get to fishing. Didn't work at all. Ooh, casting across this pond. Little yo-yo technique, reeling it in. When I reel, it actually is pausing the lure. I'm bringing it in with the rod tip as I raise it. It's swimming. Now it's sitting still as I crank in. That little pause 
oftentimes it's funny it will incite the strikes they might kind of see it flash right in front of them then it pauses and they just got no choice but to eat it there we go first one of the night all right lipless come on baby yes yes and it's a fatty it's a nice little fatty right here Ooh, baby that's what i'm talking about on the lipless crankbait under 10 under 10 minutes for sure that was probably six minutes in or so wow all right all right all right we got the bass baby on the clutch add those to your box free shipping oh yeah mystery tackle box pulling through and it's like this fish feels so heavy for its size like this is a small look at the mouth on this thing it should be so tiny but it feels like a freaking two pounder this thing is so fat it's a football it's a football oh my winter feeding he is stocking himself up for the cold months oh my lord would you believe it what a beauty sunset is here let's go ahead and let homie go actually we got to get a picture all right then i'll see you when i see you swim off there she goes there she goes that's what i'm talking about where she swims off to nobody knows oh wow oh wow Whoo, that's cold water i'm kind of surprised that thing is active and wanting to even hit this but i'll tell you what I'm not gonna complain, I'm gonna get back in there and catch me another, how about that? That time I don't believe it was on the pause, you guys are pretty sure that was just a consistent reel, almost slowing it down. You wanna go, uh, I would say this time of year especially, maybe as slow as possible. You know, that rattle is really gonna irritate them. Really what I'm doing is getting reaction strikes. These are probably some pretty inactive bass, but the fact is when they see a little flash like this, they just can't resist. And so I'm just trying to cover some water, maybe get in front of some more fish's face like that, that maybe would not hit a moving bait. You're just kind of almost pissing them off with uh, all the sound that these clutches really make in, in the water. And uh, like I say, that reaction strike versus uh, I'm willing to go after it. He probably just whipped right at it out of nowhere when it passed by his face. We might have just gotten lucky. And that is why I could uh, spend a lot of time probably throwing that crawl out right now. And it may not be as effective. Um, Cause I might get in front of fish's face and they're not willing to move. But this thing, like I say, just that little flash grabs their attention and they got no choice. So let's keep fishing. Screw this. Dribble's pissing me off. See if the crawl won't get a hit. Nothing on the crawl after a few minutes of throwing. I think I'm gonna try and cover some more water. The sunset's going down. I don't have a whole lot more time. I'm gonna grab that lipless again, walk the bank a little bit, and see if we can't get some more catches. Fido, you're not helping. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Come on. That's a good one. That's a good one. He's pulling drag. Yes. Come on. No! That was probably a four pounder plus. Look at this. Oh my gosh, insane. I was just about to flip them up here, trying to wear it out a little bit. You don't want to just necessarily, you don't want to horse these fish in all the time. You got to give them a, a second to fight. Otherwise, you're not going to bring them in regardless. You'll try and flip them up on the bank and they're still flopping. That was the one right there. Wow, that is unfortunate. Oh my gosh. And that was a big fish. These things are plump. You saw that last one? Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what, the clutch is gonna get this thing done now. I'm gonna have to come back here tomorrow and resume this video. We gotta catch Big Bertha. That was, mmm, mmm. Gotta love fishing, boys. Gotta love fishing. Hey, I just lost like a four pounder. Yeah, I'm telling you, it was on the clutch. Like I had it pinned, I was about to flip it onto the bank and then it just got, it just, all the weight was gone. And like it was flopping right here, like under the water. So it was just to where I couldn't see it, but like huge like wakes and swirls. I was just, I was so excited. I had caught one already and it was a smaller one, like, like under two pounds, but very fat. This thing was like fat for the winter. I'm thinking it was, I'm thinking it was probably four. I threw the craws around that were in the box for a little bit, but no hits and I figured I'll just cover some water and try and get some reaction strikes and literally I'm walking the bank casting and this thing hits and like it's taking me, it's taking drag and like I'm pretty sure it's cranked on this reel and it was pulling drag. Um, it's a bummer. I'm kind of like where you caught that three and a half when that was like your PB back in the day and that cop drove by. 
Yeah, freaking stupid. Okay, though, I'm gonna get one. And if I don't, uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna wrap this up pretty quick because the light's fading. Oh man, guys, seriously, what a bummer. The weight it had and it pulling out drag, it could have it could have been bigger. I don't know. It could have been smaller. <sighs> I don't want to waste any more time. Not not meaning I don't want to fish anymore. I could probably throw this lipless and this color and get some catches all freaking night. Who knows? But the thing is. I want the quality to be good for you guys and the lights just fading and it's not going to turn out high enough quality for what I want in this video. So I'm going to come back here tomorrow and keep throwing that lipless and more of the stuff out of the box and hopefully we can get on that big one again. But uh, let's go ahead and make it back to the house. Devin and I are going to go grab a bite to eat. We're about to start a whole 30 diet throughout the rest of January. So anyways, we're going to go have a little dinner tonight before we get into that. The pantry is now cleared. She's got everything cleaned out. We got to go do some whole 30 shopping. Anyways, I'll catch you guys back here in the morning. Ah, welcome back. It is 11 a.m. the next day. Yes, I am wearing about the same thing. Thanks for noticing. And we are about to get to fishing. I don't want to waste any more time. I think we're already 10 minutes into this video or so. I was up late editing it last night and I got to just about the point where I lost that big fish and now we are back here trying to catch and reclaim that uh, bass. So let me go ahead, grab these rods out of the car and get to cast and I'm going straight for the clutch again and if they don't hit it, then of course we're gonna slow things down and grab some more stuff out of this box. But since they were hitting that last night, I just, that's the confidence move this morning. That's the confidence move. That's what you need in fishing. Everyone always asks me what bait to use. What do you feel good about using? I think you should use that first and then you should throw everything else in the tackle box. It's funny, but I never really have one bait that I'm gonna use for sure. Well, yeah, I guess I do. I usually have a crankbait. T I usually have some sort of crankbait tied on, and lately it's been lipless since you have quite a bit of control. Let's not get that fountain background noise in here. And then I usually almost always have a Texas rig, and then everything else is almost on rotation. But I'm probably guaranteed to always have a crankbait or a chatterbait tied on as the moving bait of choice, and then a Texas rig as the bottom bait of choice, and then we'll expand from there. Let's get back on the water. First cast on this beautiful Monday morning. I hope you all aren't spending it at the office. I hope you are out having fun. Oh, wow, that felt like a fish, but it was just grass. That gets you amped right there. That gets you psyched. Little bait fish. Oof, dang, this thing looks good. Science would tell me people probably hit this bank less frequently. I was thinking this corner spot could be good. This uh, thicker grass stuff here is housing a lot of smaller fish, and I think I just saw some bluegill swim out from right here. This might be known as the uh, cafeteria for the bass. I wonder if I can catch them on lunch break. <laughs> Same dog, different day. Okay, one thing is for sure, after circling the entire pond this morning, uh, the fish are lazy today. It has been half an hour, fished it, and I feel like every different depth and along the banks and out deep and by the trees and no fish so i'm walking over here to get my texas rig set up and then i'm gonna throw that for a few minutes and if they don't hit the texas rig i'm gonna throw something i've never thrown here that i think will work guaranteed uh given enough time to fish which i only have don't have that much time left here she is all right quarter ounce weight four or five on hook i forget slow and steady wins the race not a lot of time left i know i can give these fish to eat let me go grab the drag and drop We are going to do a Palomar knot using a lot of excess line to hook up our drop shot real quick using the drop shots out of the MTB box. This is gonna be something small, easy to eat, right in front of their face. Uh, after a long cold night, maybe they are just in a different mood. Don't forget one of the most crucial steps on your drop shot, which is going back through your hook. That way your uh, hook stays up. If you've tied your Palomar knot, if you go back through the eyelid of the hook, that's what helps with that uh, weight being pulled to the bottom, keep that hook in the upright position. Better hookup ratio. I've just got these generic quarter ounce Carl's drop shot weights. The rig is all but set up. We just need a worm. There we go. Well, let's make a move. Let's scoot around a little bit. I am shocked. I have zero doubts in my mind that this is the right rig to be using right now. After you throw some moving baits, you throw a couple bottom baits, it's proven to be a tough day. Uh, I think you're just trying to locate these fish, get right in front of their nose and give them something that is so easy to eat they just cannot resist. Today the crankbait wasn't getting them unfortunately so we threw the crawl out. I had what I thought was a couple pecks but I don't know if it was a bass or not because I'm sure they would have scooped it right on up. It could have been some bluegill. And now we are rocking 
the drop shot. The only thing I could think is maybe they want something like a watermelon red flake and they don't want uh, this here, but that that's, I don't, I don't really believe that either. I think they're just very finicky today. You just gotta catch them at the right feeding time or maybe even just find them in the right location. And that is it. So I've been scouring this place trying to get a bite. We might have to call it here in just a minute, but I'll tell you, I give myself an A for effort. I was determined to come and catch that big fish. And we know it's here, so we will be back. Please enter wash now. All right, y'all, I think that is going to do it for today's episode, but we did have a blast with you guys. Uh, it turns out she does start. We just haven't really driven this thing much since we got the new battery in it. This is literally like a new battery, like barely, it's just, she's been sitting, it's getting colder. Y'all know the deal. So we need to get a trickle charger or something. I'm glad y'all got to witness the biggest bass of the year. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring it in. I'm more and more bummed out about that as time goes on. Cannot thank Mystery Tackle Box enough for sponsoring today's awesome episode. We had a ton of fun filming it, editing it, and trying to catch some fish. I guess technically we caught fish. Anyways, guys, if you want to give Mystery Tackle Box a try, I love it. You'll love it. Try your first box for as low as $4.99 with code Weston at checkout if you don't use my direct link in the pinned comment or the top of the description. And that's that. Shoot, get 30 boxes if you want. I ain't gonna hate on you. You know what they say on Weston Smith channel. If you ain't tried it, you haven't tried it. <gasps>